the morning after the frost picking right up from where things off last week actually last week's video is still uploading as we speak it was supposed to get really cold last night it looks like it got down to about 37 which is not great but i don't think that that was an issue out here see caladiums good impatience good those would have been burned back heavily if things had actually gotten that cold back here so it lucked out there also this happened do you see look at this i was looking out the window this morning and <laughs> there is a grackle bird these little black birds that are very intelligent and smart and cantankerous little critters it was sitting up there in the tree with a string in its mouth just pulling at it and yanking at it having the time of its life it wasn't tangled up i made sure and it just it, what look it goes all the way over and down and then there's like just like this spider web going on in here it's because i was tying some things up yesterday and i left my ball of twine over here on this glider yeah that there's a mistake i will not be making again <laughs> look at this and then also on a more serious note i mean this could have gotten tangled up around an animal and injured them i wouldn't have thought that that would be an issue when it's bundled up in a little ball like that but now i know uh what these birds are going to do i can't i mean look it's it's so dumb they're ridiculous birds i'm gonna get this all fixed up because that's seems very dangerous to wildlife just have string everywhere and my dogs not actually ready to start this week's vlog because like i said still uploading last week's but wanted to make sure to mention these things while they were actually happening oh hey what's up garden friends jeff your tropical plant party how's everybody doing i hope you're good i'm great two and a half minutes into the video off to a great start jeez i've been at it for like 15 minutes the knots are insane look at how much i have pulled up and all the stuff that see that it was all wrapped around in here all the way up and through and back over there but hello you can see that maybe not that well that looks like a hand tied knot to me but see this right here that drain pipe that's also where the ground squirrels live i call them chipmunks they're actually ground squirrels so i'm thinking they just had themselves a great time out here with the string and really just went to town and then the grackle birds must have picked up the slack because it just it was like wrapped all the way up here into like it was all the way up here i don't know how the little chipmunks would get up here without that flexing down and it was wrapped like all the way through it and through different parts on here where this these wouldn't have held up for the squirrels so i'm thinking maybe they worked together or it was a human i don't know a couple days later the people came to give an estimate on the magnolia uh, but the problem is the estimate they gave was for my plum tree which i didn't i don't want that cut out so they can't come back till friday there's another company coming out uh sometime today so hopefully they will be able to give an okay estimate and i am kind of at the end of my rope and pretty much ready to just take out my chainsaw and just cut the whole thing down i can dig around it very slowly and uh, get in with a saw and cut out roots and stuff like that it'll be a big project i probably shouldn't do it because i have this shoulder injury situation but i'm over it because i can't do anything else over here until that gets done and i'm growing impatient so i think that this cold weather doesn't help it <laughs> i thought friday well it was friday was very cold and then it turned out sunday also had another frost warning got down to 38 but we're out of that now everything's good like it looks like everything's going to be climbing from now on temperature wise which is fantastic and i'm thrilled about that with that little setback plus like now not knowing what's going on here with the tree i'm just kind of like, you know what i would really like to get in here and just get to work so i'm was going to work on moving mulch around and some other things like that but there are a couple little wren fledglings hopping around in here i think they're hiding under the grass right now mama birds keeping a watchful eye on them and i kind of just want to give them their space so uh, i'll give that another day just to be nice to the babies and the wildlife seems like the right thing to do so i'm gonna just leave that area alone for today i'll get an estimate see what they say and hopefully can get this situation handled but in the meantime this croton uh, it got kind of beat up by the storms and i moved it to where i thought it would be more sheltered and didn't account for the fact i moved it over here and it's just it's instinct for me to put plants over here when i'm harding them off 
but the magnolia tree <laughs> isn't there to provide shade for hardening off plants anymore. So it's a little bit bleached. It's all right. It's going to flush out with new growth very quickly. But I figure, like, well, I can go ahead and put this where it goes and at least start getting some more stuff done with the houseplants and the tropicals that are in there and start rotating things around finally. So I guess that's what I'll do. I don't know. It's going to be another vlog where things are just kind of up in there with lots of little projects. But that's pretty much it for right now. Watching plants come up, surrounded by that hideous cypress mulch. And yeah, it's a beautiful day. Like, look at the sky. Isn't it gorgeous? It's absolutely beautiful. It's like 50 something, so it's a little bit chilly. Who cares about that a month from now? It's going to, not even a month, a couple weeks from now, it's going to be really hot and humid. So I'll probably be missing the cooler weather when it's time to get outside and do big, heavy things. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? I'll hold off on talking about that till the next garden tour. And I normally put this croton over here. I have a hole that's like pre-dug. I'll have to dig it out a little bit more. There's a rose sitting in there right now and a couple of pots that blew in there. But I don't see any reason why I should change things. I think that that looked good there. Well, other than the harsh lighting, that looks much better. I have to adjust it some more because it's like right in front of the doorknob. I don't have to reach through the plant to get to the doorknob, so I need to twist it and stuff. I went in and put some slow release on top of the soil and a really nice organically rich uh, compost base potting mix on the surface and work that in just a little bit just to liven it up and freshen it up because it doesn't really need a repot yet. It will next year. Never hurts to top them off with some nice soil though when you bring them back out. It's just like once a year. It's just that they seem to appreciate that. And now I guess, I don't know. I just kind of, I think I might just start planting stuff. I don't have a plan here. There's still so much mulch I need to move. Oh, that, that bromeliads still over there. So one of these bromeliads, I uh, just, I ran out of space. So I just kind of went ahead and just threw it upside down and put a little mulch on it. And it did just fine. It's okay. Like I was saying though, I do still have this mulch to relocate that's around these bananas. Then there's a good amount over here as well. And then the pile I just showed you over there. So I can't really plant until I get that moved. The problem is my wheelbarrow's busted. Also, it got very cloudy and it's starting to mist a little bit. May have to switch over to using my phone. Look at that new growth, isn't that pretty? You enjoying the ADD vlog so far? This wheelbarrow, every time this tire, I like put a new tube in it, put a new tire on it, pops. New tire, new tube, pops. Every single time drive me crazy so i think it's time for an upgrade oh what is that birthday present this is from my dad got me a gorilla cart for my birthday and i'm so excited this is the seven cubic put with it's a dump cart a dump cart work less less effort this one's supposed to hold 1200 pounds nice sturdy wheels i'm gonna throw this together and work on some of that mulch as long as the rain holds off i don't it's misting, so I do need to put the camera inside while I do this. Hopefully I can get through it before things start getting... Well, if I stop talking, that'll make things go faster. Like I said, weather's not great, so don't want to have the camera out if I don't have to. Some, I'm standing in a spot where there's an extreme echo. And I look at what my little helper did. Thanks, Tobes. You always so helpful. Well, you drew one. Oh, so, yeah, that happened. Toby decided to he has a knack for like being right where you need to be if you're ever cooking a big meal in the kitchen you always want to prep that before Toby gets in the kitchen because once he's there he's always standing right in front of you wherever you need to be you like to be close by don't you Toby don't you Toby yeah you good boy this isn't for you would you would you mind wiping your face please you're on camera have some dignity Toby hey look at that that went together pretty quickly and I finished right when it started to rain so uh, I guess we're just inside for the night because it's pretty oh it's a fun reflection it's pretty cold out there it's like 52 something like that which I know isn't that cold but like I felt cold so I don't know I don't feel like being out there anymore you don't like to be cold do you pumpkin nope oh this means she wants cookies go all the way down there She'll pop up here eventually. I see part of her. Where's she gonna come up from? Where'd she go? There she is. Is she gonna, do yep, oh, oh, there she goes. Hey, pumpkin. Yeah, I'm on the side of the kitchen that we keep the cookie jar, aren't I? Well, you have to wait a minute. Cause I'm in the middle of doing nothing, pumpkin. Wanna go outdoors? No enthusiasm? I, I get it. It's really, it's just a gross day. It's supposed to be 82 tomorrow and raining but 
82. Good morning, Colby. You want outside? Can't go outside. Weather's just not behaving. The I have three different weather apps I'm running right now, and uh, all of them are like, hey, everything's fine. It's a beautiful day. And I'm like, it, wait, no, it's not. Y'all are liars. It's just misting but you can hear the thunder and if you look at the radar there's like a giant red and orange blob getting ready to hit the area so that's fun uh, hopefully that'll pass in like the next half hour but i'm just i'm getting i want to go outside and plant some things come on weather it's okay i have my gorilla cart so i'm gonna go outside and grab my metal shovel and stand outside in the storm and try and get some of this mulch dug and i'll put that bromeliad back where it goes that's not that's, that probably isn't very happy like that yeah i got like five shovelfuls of mulch in there and then it just started pouring but that's okay look things are nice and wet plants are watered i don't have to water today that's actually not true it didn't i don't think it rained quite hard enough for that but i've been stuck inside so i haven't really been able to talk about the gorilla cart i'm gonna go ahead and get this filled up and then uh, dump it and start planting stuff hey i am loving that cart i got that pile of mulch up and out and dumped i'll show you with the next one how amazing that was so now last step before i can get planting is to well i need to handle there's one or two actually mulch piles over there then i want to go ahead and get everything picked up off the patio so i have some nice clean lines because there's just like things are th th things are scattered they needed to be with lighting and weather and whatnot i was trying to just drop things where i thought they would do their best but i don't need to do that anymore things were like buried underneath other things of mulch and as i go about doing stuff out here i'm kind of excavating the uh messes that'll be nice get the plants up off the patio at least away from the garden beds and then cleaned up and tidied i don't know if i should tidy too much if i'm about to plant a bunch of things but i really can't plant much down there well you guys know what's going on there i'm just working on this area right now i've always been such an advocate for the dolly I always use with the you know you can flip it into a cart and it's a very nifty thing but this thing's pretty nifty too i don't know how am i gonna move all these plants or oh, i guess i'll just put them over here in my gorilla cart because i'm a gorilla cart owner now and i can put things in a gorilla cart see see okay it's only three plants but i'm all loaded up with the annuals it's gonna set them up and get them planted these uh sun impatience not looking too hot but once they get in the ground they'll perk back up so, yeah there's a little bit of cold damage sometimes it takes a few days to see that for it to show itself like i said they're annuals so getting them in the ground that will make a really big difference i'm gonna go orange pink orange pink i don't think i have do i have room for that i want there to be more pink than orange over here that should be okay they only need to be about 18 inches apart or so so that's not 18 inches close enough orange pink up another orange right here where i need to move that shovel another one of these pinks back over here i want them to be up high because i want this line that you can't see right now because the mulch is pulled over it this will get dug out and straightened up in the next couple weeks but I, there's a nice line here in a slope and i want the sun impatience to be back far enough that they don't kind of come over and hide that slope because i might want to plant something else to come down that a little bit these do even though they're the compact they still get pretty big and bushy i've seen them get up to 30 inches i think the label says 24 but i mean they get they still they're very large plants so that's all it's going to take to fill this spot and i have a thai giant leucocasia back here usually that's a little bit further forward but every year it overcrowds and shades everything so i'm going to tuck that further back towards the house this year and then uh, i have some bulbs and things that i'm gonna tuck in there that'll be boring you won't be able to even that won't matter the Hilo booty <laughs> Hilo booty the Hilo beauty elephant ears that i showed in last week's vlog i'm going to put as a backdrop to the sun impatience over here but again you won't really be able to see those right now i do so i can still see there's like a mound of mulch back there i need to get in there and work that out a little bit more bring around some garden swell because i want to kind of work this berm a little bit to be a pretty good start for this area but before i get going over here i'm gonna have to do this very quickly because that's you see that yeah lots of thunder i think i have like 10 minutes to get this done i need to build this bill i need to build this berm back up i've talked about that in other videos I have a good amount of garden soil here i need like 30 bags i was able to get eight delivered that's fine it's a good start that'll do for this area anyway so i'm just going to pull more mulch back put the garden soil on top i'm going to add some sand some gypsum into the mix 
hoe it in, and then I'm gonna put some mulch back on top of it to keep it all from eroding away. And I have to do it very quickly. That should be pretty good. There can still be some mulch on the surface. That's like, I mean, it'll work into the soil. That's not going to hurt anything at all. Now I just gotta get to dumping and spreading everything. Oops, okay. Apparently that doesn't hold itself up. Good to know. Gypsum first. Gypsum's gonna go ahead and help the layers blend together, help with drainage, and uh, pour that mix in there in the sand. It doesn't actually matter what order you put it in since it all needs to be blended together. I'm gonna come in here with my hoe and work that in. I need the layers to blend together, otherwise this will just be sitting on top of the existing soil, and that's kind of useless. It'll just, it'll be runoff and it'll be a big mess. I'm going to try and blend this up some more and get that mulch back on top of it so that this doesn't all wash out, but hey, get it, get, I'm gonna shut up so I can get it done. It's like 15 seconds later, no, probably a minute. This is what's happening. It just started pouring and really stung, probably because it's hailing. That always stinks. No fun to get hit by hail. Look how pretty, isn't that beautiful? I love the new foliage on those Norway spruces. It comes out all light green and fluffy. Uh, this will pass soon, just a little heat storm, and then we can get back over to here, right there. Can't really see it. I don't think it's raining hard enough to like wash any. Oh look, the electricity's working again. Hey, nice opportunity to go ahead and cool down a little bit. It's pretty muggy out there. Oh, look who's out. Don't usually see her when it's storming. She used to be terrified of thunder. Sometimes she still is, but she just came right out. Pumpkin, you said your brave little toaster pumpkin. But you, she wants to go upstairs and hide. Never mind. Still an improvement because usually when it storms, she would disappear under the couch for like sometimes an entire day. I'd have to drag her out so that she would eat and not dehydrate. So still impressed, Toby. You don't care, do you? Doesn't care. Toby doesn't care about anything. <sighs> Okay, well, that's over. <laughs> Back to work. Things got a little bit more muddy and some standing water over here. That just is what it is. That's why this area here needs to be cleared out and clean so that things can drain freely. There's a drain under here that carries everything away from the patio. Now I'm going to take my shovel, my shovel, <laughs> my shovel right there, and I'm going to start working it in a little bit more deeply. You know, the... It's not ideal to be working with moist, damp soil in the ground because what can happen is you can end up compacting the soil as you're digging and almost like if you have clay like I do. And what can happen is you sort of end up creating like a bowl underground that doesn't drain as well. So I just have to make sure that wherever I dig, I'm going to try and dig the whole area, but I need to make sure to keep things scored by taking the shovel and really digging it down there. Uh, tripod time's over because that's soaking wet and I don't want to ruin my camera so we'll just pick back up again in a minute or two or ten, who knows. Okay, so all that soil's been it turned over and spun around so the what was below is now on top and what was on top is now below. I'm sure you get it. There's been an awful lot of talking and I would like to just kind of move things along a little bit so let's just do a before and after. So here's this bed right now and then it's not gonna be a dramatic transformation here we are right now and then done this looks really messy on camera it doesn't look quite as bad in person it's been um about five and a half hours mostly because i i'll talk about that later so this is just the beginning of this area just kind of getting things started there's a lot more to do over here but this is just what i was able to pull off right now with what i have so to start things off Back here in the back on each side of this queen palm, there are two Chinese fan palms. One right here, one right there. It's Livestona chinensis. They are root hardy. As long as you situate them right into zone six, they'll lose their foliage, but they should come back next year. I don't know why they wouldn't. It's one of the reasons that I wanted to freshen the soil and everything up, just to make sure that it would drain well and everything, because I knew that these were going in here. So for winter survivability, really needed to have things nice and rich and well-drained, which they should have been anyways, but it doesn't hurt to top dress things and rework the soil every now and then, especially in a berm situation where you have a lot of stuff that leaches out the sides. Originally, I wanted to do sable miners in each one of those spots. That's another fan palm. It's just fan shaped leaves, no trunk. But the place I was going to order them through, that didn't work out. Things fell through. So Chinese fan palms, it is. It's a little bit experimental. They're not quite as reliable as like a sable miner in zone six where I am, but I've had them come back for me on plenty of occasions. So it should be okay. And then, um, 
uh, there was another short storm that already moved some things around. These on each side, these pretty pink plants, these are the Cordon Fruticosa Maria. And uh, they were in a pot of four and I went and divided them up. So I need to get some stakes in there to help hold them up a little bit. They lost some stability from being, you know, taken apart. So that's not that big of a deal. I'll throw some stakes in there to help hold those up. You can see where that one back there is kind of fallen over a little bit. And then sun and patience. Very sad and ready looking sun and patience. So what I decided to do here, because I had such a wonky variety with these, was that I did a row of the compact deep rows in the very back. They have a darker foliage and a very beautiful vibrant pink flower that's really hard to get to show on camera. Then in the front, I went ahead and alternated the electric orange with the compact pink. I did that because I have an entire flat of these compact deep rows, the ones with this darker foliage on them. And uh, it just made sense to go ahead and utilize them in this area. They're planted a little bit close together. But with them being annuals, that's not something I worry about as much. And they'll need a midsummer cutback anyways, so that's not really a big deal. And uh, what I'm hoping the effect will be here with that darker foliage behind the lighter foliage. And then there's purple from wave petunias that I've put in front here, which are Again, yeah, they're looking a little bit raggedy. It's just like I said, storms. It's going to take things a while to adjust to being in the ground and everything. But hopefully it will be nice to have this lighter color in the front. And then alternating colors from that row of sun and patience with a darker solid backdrop. I think that that will help tie things together. Especially with having the solid colors on each one of the Chinese fan palms. And then the variegation that's over here on those Cordelin fruticasas. Fruticasa the tea plants. The original plan for the front, that's drip line. That'll be moved, don't worry about that. What I wanted to do here originally was alternate lemon coral sedum with some purple heart plant. I have one purple heart plant down here. Both of those, for me, when I have planted them in a gravelly area over here by some pavement and a little warm spot, they usually come back for me every single year. So that would be nice to have that row of semi-hardy perennials which is fitting because the Chinese fan palms will be semi-hardy also to have those over the front because they're both plants that will kind of creep over the edge. It's always hard to show depth and dimension on camera but there's a pretty steep slope here. So if I can get the lemon coral sedums, I have a flat of them on order, I don't know if they'll send them or not, then I will still tuck those in between these wave petunias because I think that that chartreuse green will look absolutely beautiful in between with the purple of those wave petunias. And then I will <laughs> go ahead and grade this out a little bit too. So the drainage situation here. Every single year I have to come through and take my shovel and dig this whole area out to allow water to move through and come down to a drain that's down further on the patio. This took a really long time this year because the ground's wet. So water just kept rushing back through. I would dig it out, water would rush through, dig it out, water would rush through. And I am a stickler about making sure that that gets done because I like to see that nice sharp line along the patio here. So uh, you can see where the water is just kind of standing still. It's because the ground's saturated and I'm just, I'm done digging. I don't feel like going through and digging out the drain any further. I spent a good, um, probably two and a half hours on that because it just kept filling in. So I had to keep digging out and it kept filling. So eventually I was just like, you know what? That's enough. I don't feel like doing that anymore. This isn't fun. Uh, and then I also dug up one of the ostrich ferns and relocated it. You can't really see it, but it's back there. This entire garden bed is one where I would like to get some more symmetry going with everything. <sighs> Sorry, there's like gnats flying around. These uh, midge flies and they bite so I keep blowing them out of my face. I don't like how these ostrich ferns come up over this curve right here. I'd like for that line to be more clean. They're spreaders and I still want them up top but what I'm going to do is remove some of the ones that are down low over here and uh, pop them back up against the wall and then some over here on this side so that there will be ostrich ferns on each side of this bed but not coming down quite this slow. The only reason I didn't do that right now is because there are also a lot of gingers in here. You can kind of see some coming up from right behind that rock. What I'm also going to do with these gingers, the ones that are coming forward, I'm going to dig them up and uh, locate some of them back here in this corner. That way this entire area will have some ostrich ferns on each side right here with those gingers coming up like so from the background. And then there's also Tropicanas planted behind everything that will come up against that wall and help block it a little bit and provide nice color and contrast, like a lot of color and contrast. And uh, this, that's just, I just set that there. That's not staying there. I don't think it would like the amount of sun that's there, but the bananas would probably shade it. It's just, it's an experiment. I'm putting something else there that looks similar and I want to see how things played together. So that's just, 
that shell ginger is just there for right now. I'll move it later. And then at the end, you can kind of see these big green bold leaves. That's a crinum lily, and I can easily take a division from that and plant one over here. And that way things will be a little bit more symmetrical by having the fern, it'll go crinum lily, ferns, and then the Chinese fan palms, gingers behind them, tropicanas, and then all this fun stuff. The quarter ones are annuals. I'll move those inside during the winter time. Same thing with the sun impatience and the petunia. Well, I'm not gonna move the sun impatience and the petunias. They're annuals. But if I could get that lemon coral sedum, that would hopefully come back every year and have really pretty nice green texture coming over the front. I think that would look nice. Oh, and then I did also put a, I don't know why I zoomed in. You can't, you're not gonna be able to see it. Then on each side of the queen palm, I also put a bulb from the Hilo Beauty elephant ear, which will come up just a couple feet high, maybe three feet at the most, and have really pretty variegated foliage. I think that's going to look really cool. All these different leaf shapes and textures and colors over here. I'm looking forward to seeing how things start to fill out over here. I was going to put the Thai giant over here, but I remembered that I want to take a piece of ginger from over here and move it over there. And those Thai giants take up so much space. Just didn't seem like a good idea. So I actually have a better spot of where I will be putting that. It's not going to happen right now, not in this video, because I looked at the forecast and guess what? Tomorrow, more rain all day. So I'm not really going to be able to do much more here, but this is a lot. It may not seem like a lot but th th this took a long time because i had to rework the soil dig things up to get them ready to transplant but i never made my point so uh, the gingers when things start to warm up next week and today things are warming up too but they need to just get up a little bit higher before i feel comfortable digging in here to remove these ostrich ferns that have come over the front right there i want to have a better guide as to where i can dig without cutting the gingers up to a point where they wouldn't survive i want to be able to get in work them out gently and excavate them but right now a lot of their rhizomes are still underground so just gonna have to wait a week or so on that so yeah finally getting a move on things and get this dang magnolia removed then i'll be doing something very similar over in this area next week that tree's got to go before I can plant over there. I don't want to plant a bunch of stuff and then have people trampling all over it to get the tree out. Uh, if it turns out that the people who I've, are supposed to come out and give me an estimate don't show, because I've already had one company not show two times, uh, or if I don't like the estimate or they say they can't do it, then I'm probably just going to take a chainsaw and just do it myself. Because, like, I need, I'm need, i getting impatient. I would like to get things planted over here. I'm sure you guys would enjoy watching vlogs where things actually get planted, too. It's a little bit more fun when there's gardening stuff happening, isn't it? So all this isn't done. I have to keep working on this trench and keep getting things cleared out so it can drain out. But uh, like I said, I'm done for today and I don't know if I'll be able to vlog tomorrow because like I said, it's supposed to rain all day. And the day after that, the vlog comes out. So I guess, I, I guess this is it. I'm okay with it. I feel accomplished. This is going to look really pretty when things start to fill in. Just need to stake that cordial one up. I don't want to forget to do that. Very much loving the gorilla cart. This is coming in very, very nifty. Look, I got all my like yard waste in there and some fertile. Like, it's so fun. I'm pulling it around. I feel like a little kid with my wagon, except it's not full of June bugs. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to filled my wagon up with June bugs and they were my friends and I'd walk them around the yard. Don't see myself doing that with the gorilla cart, but uh, nifty. I can't believe how easy it is to move things in here when it's fully loaded up with soil and rock and all that fun stuff. I do still need to drill holes in there. I don't want to forget that because it's just going to fill with water if I don't get that done. Okay, change of plans. There have been some developments. But it's not good timing, Toby. Not good timing. Excuse you. Toby, move. Go <laughs> ahead. Toby, move. There we go. There we go. So the purple heart plants and the lemon coral sedum showed up this morning. So what should I do now? I'm thinking this might just be a case of have your cake and eat it too. Let's just do it all. Who cares? It'll be okay. Nothing wrong with it. They're annuals. Well, at least the petunias are. The only reason that I have grown to really like the idea of the petunias over here, other than, I mean, they're just pretty and they smell nice. I think that they will look good right here. But it's because I did a hanging basket. It was my prior video to this one, and it has these purple wave petunias in it. And that basket's going to go right up here. So I kind of like the idea of those things tying together. I think that that would look nice. But I also really wanted to get some plants in the ground here that have more potential to come back every year. Like, if it's a bad winter, they probably won't. There are some more cold-hardy varieties of sedum that I could try over here that look very similar to the lemon coral. But I like the lemon coral because it can it can really take a decent amount of water. Not that this area is going to be like sopping wet all the time, but it will be more wet than how 
typical sedums prefer. You get what I'm saying? So the lemon coral sedum, it's just, it's a vigorous plant. Even though it's a drought tolerant plant, it really does just totally fine. It's perfectly happy with regular irrigation as long as the soil drains really well. And the same is true for these secrecias. For these purple heart plants, they can also be very drought tolerant, but they, as long as the soil drains well, they can do just fine with a good amount of irrigation. Just, I mean, regular watering, like the typical watering that I would give for the sun impatience in the back and the petunias and everything else that's over here. So, hey, why not? I figured to just do it all. Cause look at just those pops of green. Isn't that beautiful? I think that looks so nice. It even looks good with the orange and the pink and the purple. I think that's just lovely. And uh, the one that's down there is a variegated purple heart plant, which really just from being planted yesterday is looking very nice. Amazing how quickly plants respond from being taken out of those little nursery cans and going into the ground or into a larger container. Uh, but the thing is, if I those weren't going to show up, I was planning on just snapping off growth from this one and sticking it in the ground in the spots where I wanted it because it propagates so easily that like you don't really need all of these, but you get off to a quicker start if they're already rooted. Okay, well now that I've spent a while talking about it, I guess I'll go ahead and plop them in and see how it looks. I don't think it's gonna look that great right now because they're going to need to adjust at least the set creases, the purple heart plants will, but everything else, eh, I'll drop them in, see what happens. I was in here working on this and I realized I didn't really go over how I was planting the other things and that might be something to talk about. Because the front of this bed is basically gravel, you can kind of see in here, it's a lot of rock. That's another reason that I think that something like the sedum or the purple heart plants would be good in here. So what I do when I dig holes like this on the front of the slope is I actually keep my foot right here and then go straight down and pull upwards. That way I'm not disrupting the angles. And I do that because it can be difficult planting on a slope where the if you don't do things like that, then you end up with the front of the hole being lower than the back, and it can be hard to get things leveled out. And then I am filling these back in. I'm using that garden swell that I showed earlier, which I really, really like, and I've added some continuous release fertilizer to it, and then some like soil amend, like plant tone type fertilizer in here. I know it seems like a lot, but it needs to be blended in further, and it's in a spot with heavy, heavy drainage where a lot of it's just going to end up being washed out. And I don't really do much to disturb the root ball. Generally, just like touching it when you're moving it around is enough, unless it's severely root wrapped, and then I might go ahead and work the roots a little bit. But otherwise, I pretty much just put them in and leave them alone, and then gently backfill. It is at a slight angle, but that's what I want because I wanted to make sure that this slope that's right here stays true so that I can go ahead and pull this back up. Over the weeks here, the irrigation system and rain will help wash some of the mud out of here and the gravel appearance will be much more attractive. Right now it's not looking very pretty. And then I'm just gonna spread a little bit of mulch around here to help hold all that new soil in place. I don't have a ton of mulch to work with right now, but this is better than nothing. Man, sun came out and not really helping very much with good video quality, is it? At least that's my assumption. I can't see my screen. Yeah, that's essentially what I've been doing for basically everything that I put in here. Dig it out, make sure the hole's nice and big, and backfill it with nice rich soil, pull the mulch back over it. Done. Simple. <laughs> and then of course, water it all in, right? Most important part. So I got everything in here about as properly spaced as I could. There are some things in the ground. That's always what happens. If you're new here, that pot's sticking up above the ground because there's a pipe underneath it and that's as deep as I could dig the hole. It doesn't really matter though because in just a couple weeks that pot will be completely concealed by the, uh, uh, I don't want to say petunias, the impatience, the sun impatience that are planted around there. There's a lot of color and contrast happening over here and I am very much enjoying it. These will get spread out more appropriately. I'm going to have to keep working on this drainage situation here. I think the ground is just so wet that I'm not able to really get in there and clean it out because the water just keeps filling back in. But I got to really dig that out and get the mud out. You can see it's really bad over there. See where it overflows onto the patio down there. So they actually, they make these like sort of like a felt polyfill sort of pad you can put on little slopes like this to help hold the soil back. And next year when I redo this. I do this every year. I have to go through and retrench this every year. I will probably go ahead and pull that gravel off the sides here, load it into the gorilla cart, because I have one now, and uh, put some of that 
erosion liner in here and then get the gravel back up over there because that will really help keep all this from washing out and it will help a lot with having to keep adding to the top every few years and building that back up which i'm going to have to rework a little bit there's some divots here where things settled a little bit just from the rain and everything where you can see right here where things kind of dip down hopefully you can see so that petunia is kind of low so i need to sort of regrade and smooth out that top but otherwise off to a good start nice little chunk of purple heart plant here. This is what I was talking about. They're so easy to propagate. You can just take that, pop it right into the soil. As long as it stays reasonably moist, it'll get going all on its own. And like I talked about earlier about how I kind of wanted to get the ferns off the very front here and then get some of those gingers dug up. When I do that, I'll be able to pull these a little bit further around that curve and it will just help kind of emphasize the shape of the patio over here. This does have a nice, fun, windy shape to it, but that gets lost when you have plant, <laughs> these gnats, they go right for the eyeballs. It, that curve gets lost when the plants come down that close to the slope. And it's not great for the drainage either. So in a week or so, when the gingers are up a little bit higher, I'll be able to get in there and do a little bit of excavation without doing as much damage. Overall, I am very happy with this. I'm, it's bothered me that there's only three of those see them so yeah i want to really want to put another one right there actually i have three more but i think it would just make sense to not put too much in the area that i'm going to have to do a lot of work in with a shovel that's okay it can just wait another week or two no big deal there i like it makes me happy it'll make me even happier when that hanging basket's up over there and things are mulched more appropriately loving my gorilla cart i've been pulling plants and moving them around and getting them placed it's, just, it's so easy the cart that i was talking about earlier works well for that but it has holes in it so the pots fall through and i always have to find something to lay on top of it and this it's so easy to move around too like i told you i feel like a little kid with a wagon because well i'm i mean i'm not a little kid but i got I got my wagon yeah very nifty amazing birthday present love this thing i think that's gonna do it though for this week i don't want to move on to any other projects it'll just make things take longer pool's still dirty so is toby toby always dirty oh last thing though this garden soil i really like this usually when i am mi like mixing up an amendment like i was doing earlier for the garden bed over you know over there you just saw it usually when i do that i have to buy a garden soil and like different types of compost and lots and lots of materials and mix them together but this blend I like it just as it is. That's potting soil over there. But this is that garden soil. It already has a good amount of bark in it, and uh, there's some sand, and it has the earthworm castings, and it's light and fluffy. It's going to drain well. The only thing that, like, I probably could have added to this, I think this fell out of a different thing. The only thing I could have added to this would be um, I would probably, sometimes I like to mix rice holes into a uh, media kind of like this that helps with the drainage a little bit but there are so many other things you can do gypsums and soil conditioners but it was just nice i didn't have to add uh, any bark chips or any charcoal because it looks like there might already be some in here you don't really need to add charcoal for mixing up a garden soil but i always usually put a little bit in there because it helps with the drainage but th this is just good and it was like i think 320 a bag it's this stuff right here can you see it it's this organic all-purpose garden soil from just natural i like it a lot mostly because i like its composition i didn't have to add a bunch of stuff to it which is nice i did add the gypsum soil conditioner mix but uh, that's just more because there's clay kind of far down there and i want to make sure that the layers blended together okay i'm going to repot the leucocaja into a larger pot it's going to be a few weeks so i can actually get that potted up so i want to bump it no it's time to, i gotta go you, you get it there's things happening now, i hope everybody's doing well having a great day and great life and Hopefully everything's going well for you. you know the YouTube drill, social media is linked down below. I appreciate the likes and subscribing and all those things. It helps the channel a lot. I really, it means a lot, so thank you. Oh, and comment down below. Say hi. I love talking to y'all. And thank you to everybody who reached out and gave me the well wishes on my birthday. I appreciate it. It was a very nice day. A lot of time spent on Zoom with friends and family. That's a good quality time. I enjoyed myself. These Eucamus right here, the bicolors, these are pineapple lilies. This was the only thing I didn't bring up. I know I said I was going to go. This is the last thing. So I talked about dividing up the crinum lily, which is right here. See that crinum lily? Oh, there's still a tag on that pot. This crinum is the one that I had talked about dividing up and then moving part of it down over here 
where I would pull out some of those ferns and move some of the ferns over here. So it'll be a little bit more symmetry, especially if I got a ginger over here. Won't be perfectly symmetrical, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be. The bananas, you know, there aren't bananas on that side. There's not a croton on this side, but since they're on corners, I don't think that matters. It's fine. The point though was that I was also talking with the idea of dividing up these pineapple oils. They need to be divided up anyways. So I could go ahead and cut some of these out of here. They have that beautiful red foliage on them and they have kind of like a bromeliad sort of appearance to them. And then that's something I could also work into these sides as well. I don't know. It's just something I'm thinking about. Tuck. Hey Tuck. You haven't been in the vlog today Tucker. Say hi. Okay, good boy. Actually, I'm gonna go now. Like I said, hope everybody's doing well. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.